Ooh. Ready to be the first monkey on Mars? <laughs> it's an important mission, George. If the rover sticks, your job is to give it a good push. <laughs> One, lift off. We're going to Mars! <laughs> Normally, it takes eight and a half months to reach Mars from Earth. But Pizza thinks he's found a shortcut. Yep. According to my calculations, you take a sharp left at the moon. Mars looked just like the pictures in George's book. Except now, it was right outside the window. <laughs> and... <laughs> oh, oh, Lord. <laughs> and then he found out. <laughs> George was on an out-of-control Mars rover. He had to stop it. Sure looked like a remote control. It was the remote control. Now George was in full control. Except for being lost on Mars. Maybe he could find his way using the book. Yeah. There were the two moons of Mars. Uh, uh. That wouldn't help him find his way back to the ship, but it sure was cool. <laughs> he reached the Valles Marineris. It looked like the Grand Canyon, but much bigger than any canyon on Earth. Uh, whoo, whoo. He also found the Olympus Mons, the highest volcano in the solar system. Ooh. It had a pretty nice view, too. <gasps> He'd found the rocket. <laughs> now all he had to do was drive there. The rover was stuck. He had to give it a good push to get it going again. That was his mission. <laughs> Einstein's broccoli spinach gum was gumming up the works. He wanted to get to the ship and tell the man with the yellow hat except the rover wouldn't go. <laughs> Luckily, <laughs> he remembered he was three times as strong in Mars' low gravity. <laughs> George, are you okay? You were sleeping so peacefully. Did that sound wake you up? I blew a bubble and it popped. <laughs> <laughs> then George realized why he was dreaming about gum. Ah. <laughs> 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 uh, Gum in the main rover control panel. Did you stick gum in there every time I told you to stop chewing? See, I I, I thought that one was the trash. Hey, <laughs> oops. George, how did you figure that out? <laughs> ah. Ah. All clean. 
It works. We're ready to launch. Seven seconds and counting. Three, two, one. Lift off. Ooh, ah! George, you saved the Einstein Pizza Space Program. Thank you so much. You know, sometimes I think the world would be better off if monkeys ran everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sound of my heart. <laughs> you can play with your heart while we go to the x-ray room. Not everything had a heartbeat. A doctor coat just didn't sound the same without a doctor in it. <laughs> Now, he was George M.D., Monkey Doctor. <gasps> Dr. Gazoon? <laughs> she made a lot of noise. Maybe she was emitting some bloopy sounds. <laughs> You're not Dr. Gazoon. Are you really a doctor? <laughs> I've been waiting so long, I don't even care. <laughs> I have this terrible... <laughs> Sneeze! It goes away, it comes back, it goes away. <laughs> huh? Huh? Uh, should I keep breathing? It might help if I take this off. You're a genius, monkey. Do doctor, monkey. <laughs> oh, I'm not cured. <sighs> I'm allergic to this sweater. You're the best doctor I've ever had. <laughs> and I'm not just saying that because you're a monkey. George had cured his first patient, but then... Doctor, is that you? A doctor never ignores a patient in need. <laughs> hey, you're a monkey. <laughs> my problem is my arm, not my throat. I'll wait for Dr. Gazoon, because you're a monkey. Did you hear that weird noise, too? What is that? Shh. I've had the hiccups for two weeks. I get... Stop! <laughs> well, aren't you gonna help me? What kind of... Monkey Doctor, are you? Shh. That's him. That's the monkey that tried to make me go, ah! He's a genius Monkey Doctor. He discovered my allergy. George, do you have permission to be a doctor? Shh. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on out here? George, what are you wearing? You haven't performed any operations, have you? <laughs> what was that? You don't know? I figured it was your medical machinery. Aha! <laughs> <laughs> <gasps> Dr. Gazoon. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Hello. I, I came in here during my break to play just one round. I, I must have lost track of time. <laughs> ah! 
Nothing feels as great as monkey curiosity satisfied. Oh my, my hiccups are cured. <laughs> George liked the stethoscope and Dr. Coat so much that Dr. Baker let him keep them. <laughs> and though Hunley was grateful the lobby was peaceful, he started to worry that someday George might really be his doctor. <laughs> That sounded like a chicken in trouble. <laughs> George could see those six chicks needed to be rescued. George took two because it seemed safest. That left four on the island. <laughs> Unfortunately, the chicks enjoyed being rescued by George too much to do it just once. So now, he had six chicks to rescue. Again. They didn't need a rescue fairy. What they needed was a way to cross back and forth for fun. They needed a bridge. He couldn't think of any way to make a branch longer. He could make this longer. Chicks walk on it? Now he just had to repeat the same pattern until it was long enough. Am I the first one here? Ooh, are you making cocktail wieners? Yep. No toothpicks? It's not a proper party if you don't pick up small food with toothpicks. I know, Bill. George will be back any minute with plenty of toothpicks. George had made a bridge, but was it long enough? Now all the chicks had to do was walk across. Bridge wasn't chick safe yet. <laughs> what could he do to make it safer? <laughs> that bridge had sides made from triangle shapes. suggested they cross one at a time, in case the bridge wasn't strong enough to hold them all. <laughs> but the bridge was plenty strong. It even held a whole hand. A job well done. George could now rush home with the marshmallows, toothpicks, and cards. Maybe not straight home. <laughs> that must be some party if you need more marshmallows, toothpicks, and cards already. <laughs> now it's officially a party. Oh, righty. 
we're going to play goldfish. Yeah? <laughs> 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 Mama, come see what the chickens built. They are geniuses. We better start looking at colleges. And that's how the Rankins College Fund for Gifted Chickens got its start. No, no, no. No chewing under the flowers today. We just started using a florist. Gnocchi thinks the flowers are snacks for her. You might as well let her eat flowers. She won't eat my food. Oh. I will talk to Chef. This is what comes of letting a cat make cooking decisions. George wondered why Gnocchi wouldn't eat the chef's cooking when it was clearly delicious. Oh. George would watch her and see what she was up to. George could smell the delicious sausages. But Gnocchi had no interest. George, if you would like to stay, Neddy is making a farewell dinner. My cooking is too terrible to serve. Oh. If Gnocchi's eating cat food, she's not sick. What could it be? Uh. Ah. <sighs> what will we do without ravioli? <clears throat> Uh-oh. I think I'm allergic to something in here. Yeah, I, I have an allergy. It's when your body overreacts to something like food or a, a, a plant or flowers. Some types of flowers can make some people sneeze and cough. <laughs> well, not you. Some people don't have any allergies and some have a lot. Huh? I have to move these away from me or I won't be able to breathe at all. <laughs> <laughs> that seemed familiar, but George couldn't remember why. Some nice tangy antipasto for you. Hmm, mm. kind of bland. <laughs> George knew the tangy eggplant wasn't bland. <laughs> oh. It's the stuffed up nose. Without a good sense of smell, everything tastes boring. Here's a your dinner. Oh, thank you. But for the past few days, she likes nothing. No, no, no. No chewing under the flowers today. George? George had the answer. Of course, you can take the flowers home if you like them. <laughs> well, that didn't work. George, what are you doing in here? What are you... George, I think he's allergic. You shouldn't... <gasps> 
Your cat is allergic to certain flowers. Here is a list. Oh. Really? But she tries to eat them. Don't let her. Here's my bill. So, George's theory was right. And a lot cheaper. Okay. One lick, good. Two licks, excellent. Three licks, magnifico! This will be our special tonight. It's Gnocchi approved! If not for George, we would never have known that Gnocchi was allergic to those flowers. Giorgio, you have saved the restaurant and my reputation. I'll give you a free pizza. Ah wow! It's one of the biggest warehouses in the city. It has everything. If they don't have masa, nobody does. Don't got it. What? Sorry. You're telling me that in this whole entire warehouse there isn't one bag of masa? Not one? We had a pallet that came down one bag short last week. I think maybe it fell off up there. If anyone was an expert on up there, it was George. Hey, lucky one of us is a monkey. The warehouse manager was right. There was one bag of masa left. Ah! Wait, George, don't try to climb down with the bag in your hands. Just toss it. Ah! Toss it to me. Just toss it down. I'll catch it. Just toss it. Ah! I'm ready. Let her rip. Ah! Watch out! What? George had found a picture of something that looked like a factory. Could that be a clue? Grains like corn and wheat come into the mill and are cleaned and inspected. Then the grains are put in this grinder, where they're ground, and come out as flour or cornmeal. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool! Any questions? Yes. Could we have one bag of masa, please? Oh, I'm so sorry. We don't have any masa. This is all flour. Oh, what? I'm sorry. Since there's been very little rain, the drought delayed the corn harvest. No corn, no masa. Where does your corn come from? We get ours from local farmers. <laughs> this is wonderful. It's true, the drought delayed the harvest, but thanks to my water tank, we had just enough to get through. I've been harvesting all day. I'm almost afraid to ask, but you say you've been harvesting all day? Yes. So my question is, do you have corn now? Yes. You must really like corn. <laughs> Not only did Mr. Rankins have fresh corn, but he also had dried corn that could be ground into masa right away. Come on, boys. We must see that the corn gets through to Marco's abuela. The Tortilla Express is on the way. All right! Ah! Woohoo! So they took the corn to the mill, where it was ground into masa and put in bags. Come on, boys.
Then they took the bags to the warehouse, where they were packaged for the stores. Ah, look at that. And to the store, where they filled the shelves for customers. Here you go. Gracias. And finally, to Marco's house. George was surprised. He always knew that Mr. Rankins grew corn, but he didn't realize that the food in the store and in people's homes came from farmers like his friend, Mr. Rankins. She's here! Until that day, George hadn't really thought about how important farmers were to so many people. Surprise! Ay, qué bueno! Delicioso, mi amor! Marco's grandmother loved Marco's special tortillas. Mm. This mm. is amazing. What a tortilla. But one person loved them most of all. I could eat a whole stack. Are there more? Oh, ah! Nice. <laughs> Maybe this was a perfect time to look around without distracting anybody. <laughs> How would he pay for the blueberries? There was no way George's arm could ever reach the bottom of that hole. This wasn't as easy as it looked. to be a machine for this. Inspected every girder last night, and I can't find the problem. Yeah, the only way to be safe is to tear it down and start all over. Otherwise, a big wind or strong shaking might make the whole thing fall down. Watch that sound. <laughs> Stop that! The site's closed! This 
site isn't safe. I'll turn off that jackhammer. <laughs> Look, a broken water main. That's what weakened the foundation. It was hidden. had nothing to do with this. Mm -hmm. I am so sorry. I didn't know one monkey could knock over a building. Can I pay for lunch? No, George didn't cause that. That side of the building was unsafe. Now I'll have to knock it down and start all over. No, you don't. We can save the whole thing by changing the design. Hmm. Very angular, modern, and it would save money! I love it! How can I thank you? <gasps> I know! Here! Well, what are we waiting for? We'll bring back blueberry waffles for everyone. <laughs> and that's how Curious George helped design a building. And got blueberry waffles, too. Running errands? Uh -huh. uh, did he give you a note as usual? Uh -huh. Hi. <gasps> George must have accidentally mailed the note. How could he get what the man with the yellow hat needed now? He had to demonstrate what was wrong with the man with the yellow hat. You need something for a blowfish? <laughs> Sniffles. <laughs> Big sneeze. Finger in the nose. <laughs> Runny nose. <laughs> a cold. You need something for a cold. <laughs> The man with the yellow sleep cap took the medicine and went back to sleep. And he slept a long time. Shh, shh. Ooh, you sound worse than I thought. Now, I know you're working hard on those changes, but we need to change the changes. Yes, turn the charts counterclockwise, turn the odd numbers even, and replace 26 with 19, 5, and 2. We need it done by 8 a.m., okay? <laughs> and remember, you'll feel better if you feed a cold and starve a fever. <laughs> <laughs> to make sure his friend got really well, George would feed that cold plenty. George wondered what he'd put in his mouth. Was he already feeding his cold? <laughs> oh, this is a thermometer. It helps to tell if I have a fever. Uh -huh. Yeah, normal is 98.6 degrees. I have a very slight fever of 99.2 degrees. <gasps> George had to starve a fever. <laughs> what? Well, I... <laughs> I'll figure it out when I feel better. <sighs> Hi, George. Know anyone who wants a kitten? Shh. Is somebody sick? <laughs> oh, sorry. When my best friend's cat Fluzzy was acting sick, we all had to be quiet just like that. <laughs> Fluzzy stayed in bed a long time. Oh. <laughs> the man with the yellow hat was in bed a long time. And Fuzzy didn't act like her normal, playful self. The man wasn't acting like his normal, playful self. He must have exactly the same thing Fuzzy had. <laughs> but Fuzzy wasn't really sick. After laying in bed a whole day, she had six kittens. Kittens? He wasn't sick. 
the man with the yellow hat was going to have kittens. If you know anyone who wants a kitten, send them to me. George had to get the apartment ready for kittens. By morning, George had the place ready. Huh? What? Hello? Hi, it's Professor Wiseman. It turns out your report's perfect. We don't need any of those changes. Oh, ch changes? I'll make sure you get a bonus for doing all that difficult extra work while you were so ill. I didn't do anything. Oh, you're so modest. Thanks again. Changes? Oh, boy. Milk? George? Meow, meow. Meow. Why are you meowing? Did, did I miss something? Huh. Ah. <laughs> George was very happy the man with the yellow hat got healthy without having kittens. Uh-oh. Sounds like you caught my cold. Come on, get to bed. <laughs> having a cold wasn't such a bad thing. At least he wasn't having kittens. Did all that while I was gone. <laughs> you know, I think you broke the world's speed record for making a gigantic mess. I think you're old enough to use the vacuum to suck up dirt and crumbs and paper. Ooh, yeah! George couldn't believe it. All the mess is stored in this bag. When the bag is filled, you empty it into a garbage can and start again. Okay, stop, George. George, George. Uh, George, this vacuum cleaner is too big for you. Don't make another mess. In fact, don't move till I say so. Just freeze. Not moving is tougher than it sounds, especially for a monkey. What do you think? Huh? Oh, you can unfreeze now. George, here's your very own dirt dragon. George, I have to make some phone calls. You can clean anything that needs it, okay? <laughs> It didn't matter if George spilled sugar anymore. He could clean it right up. I have the rare stamps. Call me as soon as... George, I can't hear. Vacuum the other room, please. George was running out of things to clean up. Naughty people, beware. I'm here to clean up this city. Of course. There was a whole city out there for George to clean up. See you later, George. Hi, Mr. Stamp. Those rare postage stamps are right here on my... Can I call you back? Charky couldn't carry all those small pieces of biscuit at once. <laughs> Lucky for her, her friend George was here. Charky hoped he would guard the pieces for her. 
Charky forgot that George didn't speak dog. <laughs> Every day when the nice lady threw birdseed, Compass flew off to tell his friends it was lunchtime. Find George before he empties that bag. I wonder how much stuff it can hold. <laughs> okay, with a vacuum, just vacuumed up my winning lottery ticket. <laughs> George was a happy hero, thinking of all the animals and people he had made happy. George, come back! Why wasn't it working? What good is a superhero without a vacuum cleaner? When the bag is filled, you empty it into a garbage can and start again. <laughs> of course. It was time to empty the bag. <laughs> and there was the perfect place to get rid of everything that was in it. George saw everyone he had helped today running towards him. They must be coming to thank him. George, have you emptied this bag at all today? George was happy to be of service. I'm happy to say they're all there. Uh, thanks. George, would you like to vacuum my place? I have lots of valuable, dusty collectibles. Valuable collectibles? Uh, sorry, uh, gotta go now. Bye. <laughs> George! 